So I landed from Argentina where I was in a really strict quarantine um, and because of the strict quarantine that was introduced so early on they put us in quarantine I think it was after 31 cases and maybe there had been one death. This, this is when so, I start banging my head on the desk because we, we did early on take a lot of calls from all around the world comparing but then I think necessarily and inevitably we became almost entirely focused upon what was happening here but now we're looking out of the window again about what's been happening elsewhere in the world and when you say things like that i i i, I use this word very cautiously i actually despair mm, i know i was despairing i was so frustrated from far because i was i was listening to you in buenos aires james <laughs> and i was well hearing all of the british news Meanwhile, we were just given incredibly stringent rules, which was stay at home. We, d we weren't allowed to do exercise outside. We could only go to the pharmacy or get our shopping. And it was just the rule. And as a result, their cases are so, so low. They're so much lower than here. And I'm glad to be back. I took a repatriation flight back because I wanted to be closer to my family. And it felt like the right thing. But... I was a bit like, what has been going on here? And I was hearing about people in Broadway Market having mm. picnics and barbecues. And I was like, surely English, I know English people aren't stupid. Maybe they just haven't been given the right instructions. And it was just so frustrating because I was seeing all the numbers notch up. And it, it's, it, I don't understand why they, have, they didn't handle it sooner. Um, when, when you arrived back from Argentina, having been in it... it, it what what happened? You, you mean you landed oh, at Heathrow, did goodness. you, presumably? Yeah. Guess what happened? Nothing. I landed. <laughs> I walked straight through. Nothing. I didn't get... In Argentina, there was a man dressed up in, like, you know, a space suit, taking my temperature. They were all yes. ready to... I mean, because they're taking it really seriously. That's the whole point. And when I, I landed in the UK, I was kind of waiting to get tested, to have my temperature taken. Nothing. I just walked straight out. I mean, they were obviously making efforts... Um, they had, you know, moved everything over to the terminal that I'd landed, and obviously right. there aren't as much. There isn't as much um, traffic going on. There weren't as much people, but still, I mean, I should have been checked. And yeah, I was just like, what is going on? And I put myself in quarantine because um, because I've been back from a long year away. I didn't want to move in with my parents and put them at risk. So it was just me taking my own initiative to do that. But nobody really had to. No, what you know. Anyone that's that's anyone. It's an amazing tension, this, between, I, I mean, sort of laissez-faire or libertarianism or whatever you want to term it as, and, and the, the, the fact that sometimes we just need a little bit of guidance, the, the idea that we'll just be left to our own devices, and it looks like that's what the official quarantine policy is going to be. You'll be told that you've got a quarantine for two weeks, but quite how they're going to yes. check it or how they're going to enforce it or even how they're going to police it is... It's currently beyond me, and the words Pretty Patel will explain things later must be among the, the least um, upbeat words in the history of the English language. Yeah. And the last thing, if you don't mind me saying, is that um, no. the, the kind of the point that the, the Argentinian president kept hamming home was choosing life. Like, she, obviously, the economy is going to take a huge hit as, as a result of. Um, putting the Argentinians under such strict quarantine rules. And everyone is aware at how detrimental this will be to the economy. So that's why I kept asking myself the question, are, is it that Britain are favouring the economy, you know, to the cost of lives? Or is there something else going on? Because I was hearing Boris saying, we've got the best medical advice in the world. And I was like, really? Because yeah. we're three weeks behind you in the timeline. So why are we in quarantine? And you're just about to go into lockdown, not even quarantine. It didn't compute. You know? It still doesn't. And again, I, I'm tired of saying this, actually. I'm getting jaw ache. But just because it went bad yesterday doesn't mean it has to be bad tomorrow. But I think to have faith in tomorrow, they've got to explain away yesterday. And as, as, as you realise, Natalie, as you expressed very powerfully with that Argentinian perspective and comparison, until they explain why everything's gone so badly so far, I, I don't know how they can ask us to have faith in them for the future. Yeah. And that's nowhere more obvious, of course, than, than in the arena of, of primary schools and